What's going on guys, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm gonna give you a complete tour of my brand new Yoder Frontiersman. So stay tuned. All right, so this is my Yoder Frontiersman. Um, what we have here on the far right side is a firebox. I'll just give you a, a quick walkthrough. Then we'll come back and take a look at the inside of that firebox and the chamber itself. So this smoker is huge number one okay i gotta get that out there um it weighs 3100 pounds so this is a very large smoker um probably the largest actually i can tell you that it is the largest pit that i have ever owned so here's the um the right side door it does have two doors gauge on the bottom right hand side and a gauge on the top left same with the left side door there now, I will explain to you why those gauges are placed in those spots um, here in a little bit once I open up the door. Got a really large stainless steel shelf here, which is going to be great for wrapping briskets or prepping, you know, pans, etc. So this is a really large stainless steel shelf. You can see how large that thing is, how wide it is. So that's going to work really, really good. It does have a lock to keep the doors down. Um, there is a probe port there, so you can run your your probes uh, right through there without having to uh, jam the cables on the doors. So um, it's really large counterweights on the doors themselves. I got to tell you, I can lift these doors with one finger. So as far as the counterweights working, they work amazing. So. Here's the really large stack. Um, as you can see here, it does have a damper that I can open and close if I needed to. Again, I haven't fired this up, so um, that'll come into play here uh, when I start cooking on it, I'm sure. So here's the far left side of the Frontiersman. Um, it does have a handle here that locks into place. So if you need to move it, um, which I highly recommend that you get two or three people to help you move it because this thing is heavy. So if I wanted to move it, it's got a lock right here and that releases the handle at that point. I can pull and I can also steer the tires to turn in the direction that I want them to go. So really neat. Uh, you definitely need that handle um, to help you steer this very large smoker. So let's go to the back side of it. Again, you can see the counterweights there. And um, fairly large counterweights. Again, they're they're placed in a really good spot because again, I can lift these uh, lift these doors with one finger, essentially. So there is the body of the smoker itself. Got that popular Yoda orange color, as you can see there. And step over to this side. And there's my logo, which I absolutely love. The Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. Um, again, I hope this uh, video does it justice um, because I gotta tell you, this thing looks pretty darn amazing. There's the black wheels, which I absolutely love. And now we're at the backside of the firebox. So let's uh, step over here to the firebox. So, again, this is a really large firebox. Um, I gotta tell you that this side of the smoker is extremely heavy because of that firebox itself. It is a double insulated firebox, so you can imagine how much this door weighs, or this uh, firebox weighs. So let's take a look at the door first. And um, this is a boiler style door. Uh, beautiful Yoder smokers sign right there um, this is obviously your intake and you do have a cool touch handle here you can slide it to the right or to the left um, to let more air or restrict the air from going inside the smoker you also have a cool touch handle for the door lock itself and that is the inside of the fire pit there or the uh, firebox 
and uh, it's got two really large grates with expanded metal and I gotta tell you that's some of the largest expanded metal that I've ever seen and it is welded um, to those two frames that you can see there so pretty excited to to get this thing fired up on these days and uh, here pretty soon and um, see what it does but uh, the firebox itself is huge um, that's gonna hold heat very very well I can tell you that right now one thing I did want to show you and talk about is this is the top of the firebox here and there is a hatch here and I absolutely love this hatch okay the reason I love it so much is that if I've got a fire going and I need to add one or two splits I'm gonna drop it in there and that splits gonna take a little bit to catch which at that point releases a little bit of dirty smoke and so that doesn't hit my food that I'm smoking um, I can open up this hatch and let that dirty smoke out of the hatch once the uh, split is completely caught or lit at that point I can close this hatch down and um, let the smoker uh, do what it does so let's take a look at this uh, cooking chamber um, and I'll open up this door so you guys can see why those gauges are placed where they're at now the doors do come with this lock right here just a pin slide this pin out okay then you can again look how easy it is to to raise this door here so all right so a couple things i do have some keys here you can see i haven't uh done anything with a smoker i still have the um paperwork with it um the operating instructions and i also have a catch can as well as some paint if you ever need to touch up your smoker uh, for scratches etc uh, you do have some paint to handle that you're also going to get a nice shovel as you can see here to shovel out the coals okay so here's the um the top grate and i was going to tell you the reason why these gauges are placed where they're at on these doors as you can see that gauge right here on the top left um, is directed at that top grate right there the bottom right hand gauge that you see there is for the bottom grate itself so yeah, number one it's going to measure the temperature at my grate level and gauge number two is going to measure the temperature up here at this grate here so um, these shelves do slide out <coughs> can see here so you know I can have some food here I can baste it do whatever I have to do here but you can see how let me stand back here so you guys can see exactly how far that shelf um, comes out so and slide it back in let me open up this left side door oops let me close the, uh, the exhaust damper. There we go. So you can see I've got two of these really large shelves. Here's the left side. And there's the right side. <coughs> so you can probably fit, um, good lord, I don't know, four good sized briskets on each of these shelves. Um, probably another four at the bottom of each shelf maybe one in the middle there so you can fit quite a bit of uh, briskets um, in this smoker if you needed to now this handle right here um, this does control a heat damper now this smoker does have some tuning plates that run the entire distance from the firebox all the way to the exhaust okay and I will remove one of these grates so you, so you guys can see that in fact let me take the uh, the grate off so you guys can see the tuning plates. So stay tuned. All right, so I took uh, the grate and just moved it over to the left side here. 
and again this is the damper door and again the majority of your heat's going to be coming out of that firebox this is going to be a really hot zone here so if i want to cook from the bottom up you know i could essentially leave this damper closed maybe open it slightly and the the heat's going to come from the bottom so at that point um, if i was cooking some briskets for example i would cook them fat cap down now i like to cook fat uh, fat side up or fat cap up so if i wanted to do that at that point i could adjust this damper door right here you can see that that's going to let some heat um, right out of that firebox and into the cooking chamber which again the heat's going to come up at that point i would be cooking um, with the majority of the heat coming from the top going down to the exhaust so um, again i haven't fired this up so i haven't messed with it but i will i'll probably end up cooking some some biscuits doing a biscuit test just so i could test for hot zones etc now um, I will be washing these obviously with soap and water and you don't necessarily have to um, but you can spray the inside with some cooking oil if you wanted to but um, I don't think anything's gonna ever rust on the inside uh, especially if you're cooking a lot of uh, proteins briskets pork butts etc I think that um, the grease alone is gonna help keep the inside nice and lubricated but I probably will spray it down um, with a little bit of vegetable oil uh, just to make sure everything's nice and lubricated if you will so the tuning plates you can see uh, this is the start of the tuning plates you can see some very small holes here um, that obviously is going to let some of the heat up to those holes and smoke uh, these plates are really really thick probably about a quarter of an inch thick and um, so they're going to hold some heat coming out of that firebox Again, heat's going to be coming from the bottom up, but as you move to the left, um, you will have larger holes. Let's see if I can lift this. There you go. Larger holes on the tuning plates. Okay, that's going to bring the heat over to the left side. So if I were to cook with the doors or the damper completely closed, this is going to be a hot, a hot area because again, I got larger uh, holes on my tuning plates letting more heat through on this side but i can regulate that by opening up that uh, that door there that damper letting more heat come out on the right side instead of letting it all come out on the left side so this is the uh this is a really large cooking chamber um the chamber itself is 30 inches deep uh just a cooking chamber by 70 inches long so it's about 2100 um square inches i believe that's that's that measurement 20 about 2100 square inches of cooking space um and this smoker here so 30 by 70 inches so it's a really large cooking chamber um as far as this smoker being portable it is portable um but you do have to have a good trailer probably with a steel floor um uh, now the trailer that I transported the smoker in um, it does have three quarter inch plywood and I got to tell you where the wheel was sitting where the wheels were sitting on the right side on the firebox side over here the three quarter inch plywood started to bow a little bit so I got to tell you uh, 3100 pounds will do that to three quarter inch plywood so I plan to to uh, modify my trailer a little bit so I can transport the smoker um, in the event I want to get back into competitions, etc. So um, you also have a compartment down here. And let me see if I can get to it. There you go. Those keys that you saw in that grate are to lock this box. It does have a lock right there. Let's slide this out. And put uh, put some tools in there. Maybe some some gloves. Maybe your um, your coal shovel. Maybe a coal pick, etc. Um, now, when this thing is running, you probably don't want to have anything that's going to melt. Uh, any plastics, uh, paper, because I'm sure that cooking chambers is is going to release some heat. So, you want to make uh, make sure you don't have anything that can melt or burn in that. But um, 
And if you have a shovel or some tools or something, you're going to be fine in that um, in that uh, storage area there. So that is the uh, storage part of it. Again, this thing is huge. I got to tell you, um, with the doors open and the uh, <laughs> the uh, storage unit open, I mean it's it's uh, like a transformer, <laughs> if you will. Um, now on this side, one thing I did not show you. On this side right here, there is also a door. Um, let me open that up for you. All right. So this is where my my catch can for my grease would go. You can see that there. You do have a very large uh, ball valve. And again, if you're doing a lot of cooks, uh, a lot of briskets, etc., uh, you will have to drain this. So does have a hook right here as you can see I can put a um, I can put a pail or a bucket or coffee can or something to catch all the grease so um, there's that again I just uh, want to do a quick overview on this Yoder Frontiersman um, I will have a couple other videos before I cook on it uh, cook on it um, I want to make sure that uh, I know how to operate this thing um, you know so I will be doing a biscuit test and probably a couple cans of biscuits just to just to um, find the hot zones and see if I can regulate my temperatures so again this is just a quick overview of my Yoda Frontiersman um, thanks for watching uh, if you guys have any questions uh, please ask them below and I promise I will get to your questions so thanks for watching until next time Joe is smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. See you guys.